No, to be honest, I wasn't sure I won. Uh, the last time board we saw, I think it was to Nate Brown, uh, was a minute, and I think that was just over a kilometer ago, maybe a kilometer and a half, and uh, Rohan had me cross-eyed, just biting my stem the whole time, so um, I wasn't really aware of when Nate came back or who was going on. I was just concentrated on doing uh, the best climb I could and holding Rowan's wheel. And then uh, about 500 meters to go, I, I actually caught my breath and felt recovered and uh, chucked it in the big ring and then um, just gave it everything I had to the line. And, uh, I, obviously, I was going for seconds also, so uh, no time to celebrate, but it's a good feeling. Uh, yeah, the last kilometer. Um, I think I was probably lucky that there was a, a big crowd. Uh, it sort of stopped the attacks a little bit. Just sort of aim for the crowd and make sure no one come around me. Uh, then, uh, then when I uh, when I saw about 300 meters to go, I started to basically I attack from the front, and I saw in the uh, um, it's called the TV on the finish line. I saw Brent was Brent was sort of next to me, so I just I tried to get on him, but uh, it was he was just going straight past me, and uh, he was on a mission to win. It was great. We. Uh, we got one too, and sort of surprised myself. Um, rode pretty well from the bottom uh, to the top, and and I was expecting I was expecting to blow at least three three k to go, or people to start attacking and, and shell me early. So you saw yourself on the big screen as well. Yeah, I saw myself. I got to watch myself race uh, <laughs> while I was racing. Uh, that was. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that, that's sort of how I figured out that Brent was there. I was in, uh, I was in La La Land and seeing, seeing stars, you could say, um, in that last last couple of K, that's for sure. I attacked the breakaway with about 20K to go, and uh, Greg followed me, and it was awesome to have Greg with me. I, uh, I raced with him on Axel's team a couple of years ago, so it was really cool to have him with us. And uh, we worked well together until the base of the climb, and then I, uh, I just hit it, and... Yeah, until about 800 meters ago, I was solo, and I thought, ah, oh, just maybe I'll hold on for this, but you know, they are coming up fast, and I laid it all out there, and I was happy with my performance, even though I didn't come away with the win, I was still super happy with it. I think Rohan is um, obviously the favorite for the time trial, but we have two uh, really hard stages between now and then, um, and two of them that have proved to be pretty unpredictable also in the past. Uh, so. Just uh, enjoy today, um, enjoy these first two days, and then you know create a plan for the rest of the race and keep going like this. Obviously, we don't want to throw um, both our bullets down the drain. Um, so I th look, we're going to do probably the same as what we've done for the last uh, two days, and um, I'll I'll probably put my hand up to work for him later on in the stage and and do those sort of vital um, pulls or whatever I have to do. I'm, so like today, uh, and if we can if we can hold one too, we we will. But um, if either one of us wins, it's it's a uh, it's a good tour. It doesn't really matter who it is. It's BMC. You know, tomorrow we finish um, with Independence Pass and the descent down into Aspen, and the next day we start with Independence Pass and we have some some really hard climbs towards the towards the end. Um, Hoosier Pass mm -hmm. is super high altitude. Last year we had that really nasty weather there. So uh, it's it, it's by no means um, even even close to over, um, but but I think we're in a good position. The team showed the past few days they're really strong. Rowan showed he's incredibly strong, and uh, I was pleased with how obviously how I rode today as well. So I think you know we couldn't ask for more up to this point, but uh, we we can't we can't take that for granted, and we can't be overly confident. Talk a little bit about the climb and then the, uh, the altitude against that climb. Right, so I mean, we're climbing up what, past 10,000 feet, so you have, I had to drop my watts a good 40 watts below what I normally ride at sea level. So, you know, that's what makes a climb so hard. Yeah, it wasn't that steep, but when you're climbing at 10,000 feet, it makes it twice as hard. And, and uh, for me, I suffered altitude too, so it's really hard for myself. Brent, can you describe for me your energy level coming up that last five mile pass there from Keystone Day Basin? I yeah, the energy level was 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 low. Um, this, these guys were riding like machines all day. Uh, they were they were incredible. We had to, I had to keep telling them to slow down, not bring the brake back too quick. 
Um, yeah, they were hurting me and they were searching over the climbs and uh, uh, yeah, I, did, I didn't didn't really feel great all day, but um, I think a little bit of that is the altitude and um, it was actually nice just to get to that last climb and um, have Rowan put the hammer down and then, you know, then it's simple, you know, you, we just hold the wheel, we ride as hard as we can and, it, and it's done, there's no more conserving at that point. I feel like I've had a, a good good run of form and a good run of results, um, but that win has eluded me, and it's eluded me in a lot of different ways, um, breakaways and sprints on climbs. Um, so to get it with a summit finish and to get it on the back of such awesome teamwork, um, I, I couldn't imagine it being any better. Um, it's like Taylor said yesterday, it's, it's electric and it makes me feel alive and it makes me feel inspired. And this is what, uh, this is what makes all the tough times, uh, you know, fight through those and makes it feel worth it.